Welcome to our clip this morning, the Deputy Prime Minister of Malta and the Minister for Health. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to you. One could not have prepared for such an environment we are living in, uh, a pandemic that has changed our life overnight. Um, uh, Malta has been working quite well to manage such a uh, pandemic, but there has been a number of challenges that had to be addressed over the last months. Which were the most difficult situations that you um, faced over, over the last um, 11 months? 7th of March well, was the first uh, absolutely, uh, the yes. day when the first case was register registered. Absolutely. It's, it's been a roller coaster of air, so it's not been, it's not been easy. It's not been boring either, so it's, it's been an interesting year. Now you say nobody could have been prepared for this, and you are right. I mean, the extent of the pandemic on a global scale has been something which we read about in science fiction novels or so on science fiction movies and it was always something as remote as having an invasion by aliens basically but having said this now that it's happened we need to be prepared for the next one hopefully we won't have another one in our lifetime but you never know so all around the world and more included we are of course still focused on the present pandemic but we're already starting to think on preparedness for future pandemics. In other words, our healthcare systems, our societies as, as a whole, need to have the extra capacity to ramp up in case of future public health emergencies, such as the pandemic that we've been through. If you ask me which were the most difficult instances during this, this, this last year, I would say probably the first few weeks. So not even when we had uh, the, the first cases here, even before that. So when we were seeing what was going on in, in uh, North Italy, in Lombardia, in Madrid, where hospitals were just being overwhelmed, and we were unsure of the extent of the, of, of, of the tsunami that was going to hit us. So we, we prepared, we prepared a lot, we did a lot of infrastructure work, we trained a lot of staff. Hopefully we, uh, because we're still going through, we won't need all that we prepared for. And it looks like we won't because um, things now are slowly starting to settle down. Having said that, there are still countries at the moment, um, Portugal, for instance, where the healthcare system is still struggling. So it's, 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 it's not over yet. Um, we need to remain vigilant. We need to remain responsible. There are the new variants, which we need to keep an eye on. But the rollout of the vaccine is going very well and uh, we feel there is, that we're not too far off. Mentioning the rollout of the vaccine, back in January, um, you explained a, a whole schedule of pla a plan of shed schedule that um, uh, basically planned uh, the rollout all over the, the coming months for Malta. Are you still uh, meeting the timeframes set? Uh, Actually, given we're... that there ha has been a couple of issues lately we're... with the uh, distributors. Well, it didn't really affect us because we've been, we have over-invested in the vaccine. In other words, we didn't just put all our eggs in one basket, but we invested and put orders and negotiated, even through the joint procurement mechanism with the rest of the European Union, which we pushed for, I have to say. Um, but we negotiated a significant volume of vaccine with different manufacturers. So it wasn't just a question of putting all our hopes on one company, but we, 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 we literally over-invested. At the moment, with the three vaccine companies that are approved for distribution in the European Union, we have 2 million doses booked, which is enough to vaccinate the Maltese population twice over. Um, and, and, and that's good because we have enough to vaccinate, to give the first and the second dose. And in the event that there might be the need for a third dose or a booster dose, we have that as well. Um, if not, then we will have excess uh, vaccine doses, which we can distribute to, to, to citizens in other countries because there are a lot of other people around the world who will not have the vaccine at the same 
uh, rate that we are having. Eh? I know it's difficult to predict the future, but um, uh, we, Malta is part of uh, the EU bloc. So how do you see that uh, things will flow in the coming months ahead? For, as in uh, traveling is a, is, is a major concern at, at this time around. Meetings as well. So how do you see uh, the future moving forward, at least uh, uh, the, in the coming months ahead? Well, we are in Malta, we are we, 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 we're on a good place. Not only are we keeping to the schedule that you mentioned that I, I had presented in December of last year, we're actually ahead. So we've moved, we are about at least a week, possibly two weeks ahead from what we had predicted or what we had planned out to be, which is good. Um, the rest of Europe is also slowly um, rolling out and, and, and increasing in volumes. My prediction is that by summer, the whole of the European Union will be in a good place. In other words, we will, there will be enough people vaccinated across the, 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 the European Union. Countries outside the European Union, I have very little visibility on, but within the European Union, the amount of vaccines that we are receiving, European, the other EU member states are receiving, Proportionately, do you see a faster recovery for Malta? Um, we have to do, we've been saying this from the very beginning. We have to do this together, so when and, and not just as a society but as a region and and certainly as, as a European Union. For one country to be in a good place on its own is, is, is not as significant as if as when the, the whole region and the whole block is, is. so. We've pressed for, for targets, European targets, and the European targets are to have herd immunity by September. And I'm confident that not just in Malta, but most of the European Union countries will have that um, in, within this time frame. How do you see this pandemic will affect our life from a medical point of view, but even from an economical point of view? Well, the repercussions will not be um, small and are not, are not small. Certainly from a medical point of view, obviously people who have been infected with the, with the, with the virus and who, had, who needed to be in hospital or, or in IT or, or even worse, those who lost their lives have been affected directly by the virus. But because, and this is not just me, because most health systems had to focus a lot of their attention, resources, money, time, onto the, onto, onto the coronavirus um, situation, a lot of other health services have suffered. Um, so mental health, uh, cancer treatments. Here in Malta, we're going through a, pro uh, a program of catching up for the last months that we had in the beginning of the pandemic, and we're getting there very, very rapidly. But of course, across the world, lockdowns have a vast uh, impact on, on, on not just on mental health, but even on physical health. People exercise less, they eat more, they smoke more, they drink more. All of this will have repercussions in the short and in the medium term. Mentioning ment mental health, um, this has been quite a key issue over the last months, not just in Malta, but even all around the world, especially when it comes to online gambling, which has incre increased significant significantly over the last uh, months. Um, what is Malta doing in this in this regard? Malta is an eye gaming hub, but let alone there are uh, multi-citizens and experts that they do uh, participate in, in the uh, eye gaming industry. And, and, and it's not just a question of eye gaming, but it's, uh, it's across, across mental health has been an issue, especially with COVID over the last months, and it will continue to be. The best response and the best, the best way to, to deal with it is to vaccinate as many people as possible in as short a time as possible, which means that we, go, we get out of this pandemic um, sooner rather than later. So getting back to so normal. Getting, back, getting people back to the normal routine. There will be changes, of course, but getting people back to the normal routine, getting them out of, of the house, um, op opening up social life, uh, be it village festas or, 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 or nightclubs or gazini. Um, that, I, to my mind, is the best way of dealing with the, the, with, with the mental health issues. Yes, but many of our friends uh, in the iGaming industry are looking at adopting also new working practices, especially uh, when, when it comes to keeping employees working from home. Even the EU has mentioned uh, new practices such as a 3-2-2 um, working practice. Um, do you see this as a healthy option ahead to, to our future? Well, we, 
one of the one of the requirements during the pandemic has been for people to socially distance and one of the ways that this has been uh, implemented is by asking people to work from home now is this has certainly helped with, with, with the pandemic because of course if you're working from home if you're not 10 people in one office then the risk of contagion is smaller um, but it's also shown itself to be a model where people can actually be productive if they work from home of course the way that you measure the output has to be target based rather than how many hours you actually put in on the other hand coming to an office is also important so meeting people cross pollination of ideas so even over coffee you, you you just talk about what you're doing and somebody comes up with, a, with an idea which then completely changes the way that you look at things and it happens regularly and all the time and of course this doesn't happen if you're stuck at home working from home so yes i believe there is scope for for telework or, or working from home um, but i still think that office time in the office is important a new phenomenon that we're seeing is that for people not just to work from home but to work from other countries so and this is happening so people are looking to come to places which are pleasant to live in such as Malta, and offer their services or actually why they're actually employed with a company uh, somewhere else um, and this is something that we are interested in as a country we are interested to host people who would like to to live here um, whilst employed uh, outside of the island and, and working um, remotely. Our friends at Orca, based in the UK, uh, has seen uh, and indicated a significant increase in online healthcare apps, mm -hmm. uh, let alone 20% of these apps are legitimate. Uh, do you see Malta as a hub for such services and investment in terms of knowledge? and even um, research in this regard. Yes, but it's not just a question of apps. It's a question of, of using technology uh, in the healthcare sector, which, which has been, of course, going on for, for, for a long time. When you go and do an MRI, you're using technology. When you do an ultrasound, you're using technology. Um, but the, the virtual or the digital revolution, the med tech um, revolution, if you like, has been accelerated during this last year of the pandemic. Again, I say most of it has been necessitated or brought about because of the social distancing phenomenon. For instance, we initially, must have been March, April, we asked people to refrain from coming to our patients or from visiting the doctors as much as possible to prevent contagion. And most, a lot of people managed to, to get the healthcare over the phone or, or, or through Skype or, or, or virtually. Some of it worked, some of it, some of it didn't. Um, but now we realize that not only is, is this useful as a way of keeping people away from each other when there is a pandemic, but it can also, in some instances, offer more efficiency. So we've set, up, we've set up a telemedicine center. We have a telemedicine, a telemedicine center here in Malta, manned by doctors and nurses, um, whereby Certain in certain situations, uh, patients are can get their medical care over the phone or, or through Skype, and and this saves them from going to hospital, from taking a, a, an afternoon off from work, um, and it's been more efficient. And is this working it's in Malta, working. being that there is an aging population? It's working. It's um, we've had uh, hundreds of thousands of of um, um, virtual visits, um, and it's more efficient, and it provides. Uh, another element of healthcare which is important. We've also we're also launching exactly this week um, something which is called remote patient monitoring. In other words, we're and this we're doing for for children with diabetes, where the blood glucose levels are being remotely monitored 24 hours a day, every day, um, digitally, um, and if there is. Uh, a discrepancy in what should the, the blood levels, the sugar levels should be, then they're informed um, uh, immediately. So this is this is it's happening, and, and and the pandemic has pushed this. Of course, this is one of the one of the benefits that we we've managed to to acquire out of the bad situation that the pandemic has put us. In. Malta has already a framework a framework for blockchain regulation. Um, has a, a set of an advantages, uh, tax incentives as well. Uh, do you see Malta as becoming a med tech 
country where uh, people would come and invest on the island when it comes to research, when it comes to development in such an important um, sector, which is still being uh, developed around the world. I think, I think this is the medtech is one of the growth areas within within the medical within the health service sphere that is going to happen with it's happening now and will continue to happen in the next few years and i think um, w investors who who know what's happening will look at the space very very closely in malta we have an excellent health service all our patients are documented uh, and have a unique um, reference number so we can follow up each patient um, during their lifetime Everything is centrally located. Of course, we have strong data protection, so it's not just a question of, of, of coming in and using the data uh, willy-nilly, um, which is extremely important. But yeah, and, and yes, there's a government who, is, who wants this. So, so there is scope for, for investment in, in medtech, and I say this is one of the, the great growth areas over the next three or four years. The role, uh, your role as health minister has been instrumental over the past months uh, for, for Malta to move in into this quite positive uh, direction. Uh, but this time around a year ago, you were contesting for party leadership. Do you see yourself contesting uh, again sometime in your life? There, there isn't a vacancy. So uh, I'm, I'm, I've been entrusted to, to, to look after the health of the nation and that's what I'm If doing. there would be a vacancy? We'll see if that uh, ever arises. Thank you very much for joining us this morning and thanks for your hard work. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for joining us next time round in the coming days.